Hey guys, Jack Spierko here with another episode of the Duck Chronicles. You can see where they were last night. They sure left the place a mess, um, which is their forte. But it's interesting to see where the snow's melted off. That's all back from their heat lamps, but there's a few spots here. They were just laying, and their body heat melted it. Let's go see what's up with everybody. Um, everything's still pretty frozen, but... Uh, I'd say things are getting a little bit uh, thawed out. The sun came out this morning for just a little bit and went back in. Weather guesser has given us a forecast. We will get above freezing today. We're supposed to get snow showers tomorrow, but uh, it's pretty beat because by tomorrow afternoon it's supposed to be like 54 degrees, so that'll melt all of this, and it'll all end up collected in my swales, which will be nice. We're continuing to recharge the ground. The main barnyard mafia is out and about. They're in the uh, future apple orchard. They don't know it, but I uh, believe their days on the homestead are coming to an end. I think we're going to keep Buddy and Joe. And if these guys manage to uh, brood any geese for us, they'll add to the meat collection. But I'm getting more and more to where I feel like it makes sense with my livestock to do, really do one thing and one thing well, and that's going to be ducks. I think Buddy and Joe uh, get along with the babies pretty well and everybody else pretty well. They're over there. Uh, Buddy had a big fight recently when they were on the other side with these guys here. I think the two hens were competing for who was going to get the, the goose house for laying eggs. And uh, Buddy got roughed up pretty bad by the barnyard mafia. I guess they don't remember that she's their sister. Uh, Joe was pretty upset, but uh, he's back with her and we're just keeping them separated. And uh, if it's going to be that much of a conflict, I, you know, I've got all the meat I could want in meat production from the Muscovies. They lay more, they produce more, they're easier to handle, they're easier to manage, and they get along with the other ducks. So uh, you're looking at like Thanksgiving dinner, Christmas dinner, Easter dinner here is what we can start naming these guys. It's just the way of life on a homestead. Um, but you know what? They'll have one bad day, and they've had a pretty good life so far, and uh, they'll continue to do so right up until... That time comes, again, Buddy and Joe are going to be hanging out with us for a lot longer. Uh, you know, if they give us half a dozen to a dozen geese every year for a meat yield, that's great. Muscovies are doing good. They look like they've uh, thought out a bit. This morning, Arnold and his buddy Hans right there, I mean, their, their feathers were literally stiff with ice. They didn't seem to care, but they didn't look very happy. Uh, a few of the hens looked that way, too. Well, what's the matter, girl? You flying? <laughs> she can't fly very well. Her feathers are literally frozen. Um, so here's Joe interacting with the young ones. Uh, he's, he's pushed them away from Buddy a few times, but he has not been typical goose aggressive. Probably because he's only one goose and he doesn't really see them as a threat. Just since Buddy had her experience, he's, uh, he's pretty defensive of keeping others away from her. So he's doing his job, and we're cool with that. The babies have found this old pile of uh, fill dirt back here that was never used. A bunch of grass and weeds coming in on it, and they're, uh, they're browsing it off, so that's good. Do you notice I have everybody together today, sort of, anyway? The, the adult ducks are out on the, the front paddock, but by their choice. Since everything's frozen, and they have to kind of pick and choose what they can deal with today... I've just given them free reign. Well, I have kept you know everybody on that side, the chickens and the geese separate from this side. But what that allows us to do now that everything's frozen up, these guys actually make their own water holes. You know, they, uh, they find a spot and they kind of beat up on it a little bit with body heat and what have you. And they'll create these little pocket holes of water in the ice. So... I don't have to worry so much as to how I'm going to get them to uh, to have water while everything's frozen up. I've busted the ice off their kiddie pools. We'll go see the rest of the guys here in a second. But I just want to show you over here as an example. So this is that slot pond we're slowly filling in. And we about had it beat till all this rain came. And then the ducks are in there messing it up. You can see they built a little mud hole there and this morning there were about 20 ducks in there wallering around 
and they made a pretty good pile of water that they were all drinking. So even before I got out to bust off the ice off their tanks and what have you, they, uh, they provided water for themselves. We come over here. You see, I've moved Buddy's goose house to here, and a couple of the Cayugas are pretty interested in it. On another note, that broody duck we had, she just wasn't staying on the eggs, so we, uh, we got rid of her eggs. We'll have to look in here for duck eggs today, because we might have some late layers that decide that's a good place to lay eggs. But uh, she just wasn't staying with them as cold as it is. Oh, they're all hanging on the front porch today. As cold as it is, we know those eggs are lost. A lot of you ask, how do you get 18 eggs from one duck? We didn't. We took other ducks' eggs and put them under her when she decided to go broody. Bonnie Blue on the uh, YouTube channel suggested that it might be a good idea that we create kind of privacy areas for the ducks, like nesting box type areas, especially for the broodies. She's right. I just don't have time to right now. And since the big move's coming within a few weeks, I don't want to take any time and effort into that old uh, barn or that old uh, shed that they're in now. Uh, that's going to become more of a storage facility. So what I want to do is I want to get the chickens out of the red house over there, clean all of that out, give it a good scrub down, get rid of the perches I put in for the chickens because the ducks really don't need them. I might leave a couple for the Muscovies because they do like the perch. And uh, put in some good nesting boxes for them. And I'll probably modify the ones that I have now for the chickens. We'll go take a look at that and we'll wrap up for today. Because there ain't much to look at today except a bunch of snow and ice. Chickens are out roughing up their mulch. That is going to be one heck of a cider mul uh, orchard, cider apple orchard. And I'll tell you what, it's not going to really just be a cider orchard. That's going to be a permaculture orchard that has mainly cider apples as its silver story. And yet it's going to be the configuration of a typical orchard in its layout. It's going to be really cool. I figured out on 10-foot spacings I can fit about 40 main plantings of trees in here and I might do two trees to one hole. I'll talk more about that in the future. Dave Wilson technique, he does up to four. Uh, we won't go that small though, that much of a backyard orchard, more of a managed intensive orchard. That'll let us put 80 different varieties of cider apples in here for research of which cider apples produce the best cider apples for the south. And uh, give us a lot of flexibility I'll go into later. And we'll probably have blackberries and grapes all the way around the circumference and a bunch of other cool stuff. I'll be bringing that water line in from over there. I would be doing that this week if everything wasn't muddy and messed up and frozen now. The main supply line here. Then we're going to have a main supply line run up and down the fence, and that'll supply watering for this whole area. We'll run a throughput over there, and that pond, pseudo pond, we may uh, improve that. And we can use duck poop, and we can use well water to continuously keep the bottom full until it holds and keep using duck poop to fill the whole pond and actually seal the pond with duck poop. All right, so that's something you'll see in the future. This is something I highly recommend. Over here, I'm not worried about water at all. I got a 50 gallon stock tank. That's a 250 watt stock tank heater. It comes on at 35 and shuts itself off at 45, plugged into the electrical outlet. So there's gonna be a modified way that I provide water to the ducks in their holding area to keep them from pooping it up. But this type, this technology is what we'll use to keep it from freezing in winter. So let's take a look at my nesting boxes with the light adjust. I do have light in here. All right, so all these are these bins that stack. You can see there's a bird in there laying eggs right now. Another bird in there laying eggs. These things are about 12 bucks, and I built them up off the ground, and I tried to keep them away from where they perch so they wouldn't poop them up. Unfortunately, what happens is they perch up there now and they poop them up. There'd be a, a solution in the works if they weren't all going away anyway. You see, even with our reduced chickens, we got a lot of eggs there. Good job, girls. Say hello, chicken cam on YouTube. All right, there's a black sex link. That's a buff Orpington. Who else is here? <laughs> Rhode Island Reds. That's pet food. We call him pet food because he's too small to uh, eat. But if nobody takes him, he might end up being pet food. That's one of the young roosters. I got two young roosters now. They are happy because they got a lot of say so on what goes on now because Upgrade and Carl have been adopted out. That is one pretty rooster. Anybody who lives in the North Texas area that would like a pretty rooster, that rooster is free to you if you come get him. So is he, but uh, that's just a plain old Rhode Island red. This guy here is gorgeous. 
Uh, Esteban, the red feral rooster, is out taking care of his girls on, on uh, paddock. That one with the little black tip on her tail there, that's not a Rhode Island red. That's called a production red. Anyway, that pretty much wraps it up for today. Anybody in this area that wants chickens, I am selling my hens. I am giving away roosters. And uh, I want that all done in the next couple weeks so we can get the ducks moved into their new digs. With that, this has been Jack Spierko with another episode of the Duck Chronicles. We'll catch up with you tomorrow.